We built a system to help train orchestral conductors in how to beat time. Stay tuned to find out what we learnt. Beating time is a fundamental part of a conductor's art. It's one of the first things learnt by a trainee conductor. We investigated how to automate that training so that a trainee conductor will be better prepared for the first time they're put up in front of an orchestra. I'm first going to talk about the conductor's job, what they actually do, then look at the basic training needed to get a trainee conductor ready to front up to an orchestra. Then I'll talk about the software we wrote that can reliably detect beats from a conductor's gestures. I'll talk about what we found when we did this and where this work might go next. This is my orchestra at rehearsal. Our conductor is standing at the front. But what is she there for? All of the musicians have music that provides them with the instructions for what and when they are to play. So what is the conductor's role? The conductor's job has many aspects. She coaches the orchestra. She manages them to ensure that everyone is doing the right thing at the right time in the way she wants. She inspires them to be more collectively than they can be as individual musicians. When the musicians are playing in rehearsal, she uses gesture to provide high level coordinating information. Each musician already has the individual music. The conductor's job is to pull together those individual parts through high level guidance to make a coherent whole. The gestures used by conductors have been developed over a couple of centuries. While each conductor does develop their own style, there are a lot of conventions that any trainee has to learn, the most fundamental of which is how to beat time. Gesture is used because in the performance the conductor cannot reasonably shout out instructions. That would rather ruin the music. But there is considerably more than gesture that goes on in rehearsal. Rehearsals are often very bitty, with the music stopping and starting. And when the orchestra is not playing, the conductor is providing verbal instructions, advice, reprimands, praise. For example, oboes, you were rushing. Trumpets, you came in too early. Trombones, you were too loud. Each instruction is intended to bring the orchestra a step closer to playing the music the way the conductor wants them to play. The rehearsal is therefore where the conductor is most important. But it goes further than that. Gemma New, the principal conductor of New Zealand's National Symphony Orchestra, says that 90% of a conductor's work is preparation before the first rehearsal. She needs to know the music inside out before she gets in front of the orchestra. She needs to plan for how she wants to interpret the composer's intentions. So when you sit in the audience at an orchestral performance, you are seeing the culmination of a lot of preparation and rehearsal. In a performance, the conductor's gestures are there to remind the orchestra of what was decided and practiced in rehearsal. So then, what is this conductor doing? What is this gestural language that he is using? With his right hand, he is beating time. But he can do more than that. He can indicate the dynamics of the music by the size of the gesture. Large gestures indicate loud. Small gestures indicate soft. The left hand is used for other things. He uses it to cue players by pointing at them. Yes, players can read their own music and theoretically know exactly when to come in, but a conductor's cue can provide extra confidence to the player that says, yes, you are right, you are about to start playing. The left hand can also be used to indicate volume. You're playing too loud or you need to be louder and also to indicate colour. Does he want spiky, harsh music or soft, sweet music? Trainee conductors find it challenging to get their two hands to work independently. They often find that their left hand mirrors their right. New conductors need to learn to do different things with their two hands, which is why we need to train them to beat time with the right hand as an almost subconscious action, freeing them to think about other things. Now, in addition to his hands, the conductor also uses his head. Rather than pointing at people with his left hand, he can look at them and nod to indicate a cue. During a rehearsal, the conductor will look around the orchestra to check that they are confident in what they are doing. 
For example, if the conductor noticed that all the cello players are looking confused, he can stop and work out what is causing the confusion. And he can use his facial expression for feedback. If a player makes a mistake in rehearsal rather than stopping, he can simply frown at them to say, yes, we both know you got that wrong, you will do better next time. Or if something goes well, he can smile at the player to say, yep, that was great, keep it up. Our project looked only at the earliest and most basic part of a conductor's gestural language, learning how to beat time. There are literally whole books devoted to training in beating time. On the screen you see three of the basic patterns for beating two beats, three beats or four beats to a bar. You learn how to do this in the earliest weeks of conductor training. The traditional way to practice these is in front of a mirror. Why a mirror? Because you cannot reasonably put a trainee conductor in front of an orchestra of 50 people until they know how to beat reliably. It would be expensive and a waste of the orchestra's time. So we investigated to see if we could use motion detection and virtual reality to provide a better training environment than simply putting someone in front of a mirror. And we did. We used a motion detector which tracks the motion of the conductor's right hand. We built a simple environment in virtual reality and we provided audio feedback in the form of nursery rhymes because they are simple tunes that have one note per beat. In virtual reality, we provided a 3D representation of the beating pattern floating in space, in this case, four beats to the bar. And we provided a virtual hand that tracked the conductor's real hand. So the trainee is in the VR headset and is attempting to follow the prescribed path with audio feedback on each beat. The audio feedback is directly connected to our beat detection mechanism, so when the conductor slows down, the audio slows down. And when the conductor speeds up, the audio speeds up to match. We built all this in Unity and we projected a copy of the VR onto a large screen in our lab so that other people could easily follow what was going on. So, what did we learn? First, I need to talk about what we were detecting. Naively, you might think that we should be detecting positions. Down, left, right, up. But that is wrong. That's not what musicians are looking for. What musicians are looking for in beating is flicks in the conductor's motion. These are flicks at the positions of the beats. Converting that to engineering terms, we need to find the maxima in acceleration. That means that we are looking for things happening in the third derivative of our position data. On the right, you can see the input positional data from one of our amateur conductors. It has a bit of noise in it. Now, taking the third divided differences of noisy input data makes for very, very noisy data. So we needed to carefully tune our filtering algorithms to get the detection to work. And as you saw in the video, we did tune it so that it worked well and worked reliably. We tested our system on two amateur conductors and three professionals. Our two amateurs spent a lot of time playing with the system. They both commented that it helped them to beat time more consistently than they had before. Our three professionals each had one session with the system. All three had very different conducting styles from one another. Two of them did not, by any stretch of the imagination, follow the pattern shown on the screen. But all three had clear flicks in their gestures and because the system was looking for those flicks, it worked for all of them. And all three were delighted. However, you might have spotted a problem with the engineering of this. If we're using third divided differences, then we cannot detect beats as they happen. That's because we need data that comes in after the flick has happened to be able to detect that the flick has actually happened. Our system is therefore detecting beats after the beat, about a quarter of a second after they occur. You would think that that would be a problem, but it is not. Many conductors want the orchestra to play after their beat. That is, the conductor's beating time and the orchestra plays a little bit behind them. This allows the conductor to lead the orchestra rather than the orchestra trying to guess where the conductor is going. 
our main programmer is an amateur conductor and she said that the delay felt just about right to her. She'd want her orchestra to be about a quarter of a second behind her beat. Two of our professionals made similar comments. The third professional prefers his orchestras to play exactly on his beat, which means that his musicians have to predict where he is going. They're humans, they can do that. But if we were to make that work in the computer, we would have to rewrite the code to be predictive rather than reactive, which is doable, but it is rather more of a challenge. So we have built a system that detects beats. We had two amateurs say that it helped them to be better conductors. And three professionals say that this could be useful in training a conductor in the first two to four weeks of their training. But both our professionals and we can see that you could do so much more with this idea. So where do we go from here? We'd like to do more with the right hand to get the system to distinguish between small gestures for soft music and big gestures for loud music with appropriate feedback in the audio. Then we'd really love to do something with training the left hand. Can we build a virtual reality simulator with a virtual orchestra where the trainee can cue players to come in? And if she doesn't cue them properly, things go wrong with the music and she has to stop to fix them. Could we build something even more complex like a flight simulator for pilots that allows a conductor to practice without needing a full orchestra of humans in front of them? If we did that, and that's a big project, would it be useful to real conductors or would we have just built a fun toy? This final image shows an installation built by a different team to ours. This was installed at the Mendelssohn Bartholdi Museum in 2018. They had speakers mounted on posts, not in virtual reality, but in a real room. Each speaker on a post is playing a different instrument. A visitor to the museum can conduct a piece of music by waving their arms appropriately. This shows that we clearly have the technology to build something that is accessible to members of the public, and that is fun. Can we go further and build something like this in virtual reality that will be useful to both trainee and experienced professional conductors? That is a question for a future project. Thank you so much for listening. I'd love to hear your feedback and your comments. And if you got this far and liked it, please click the like button.